Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperwall with Artark. Last week, I talked about doing a video where I would go through different portals and talk about what builds work best for them. I started working on it, and then Riot changed a couple of the portals, changed some things around, so I had to scrap what I had and then start over. So I want to break this video down into three sections, but first, graphic... Yeah, you know, you know. Okay, let's just move on from that. And I'm gonna call the first section, It Doesn't Matter. And that is, I don't care what portal you get. If you get these starts, you just play them out that way. And this list is specific to Hyper Roll. It would probably be a whole different calculation for regular TFT, but I don't play that. I just play Hyper Roll. So first, if in 3-1, you can put out three Piltovers, go Piltover. We know how to do this by now. You just lose up until about stage six. In stage six, start assembling your team. Hopefully you win by 7-2, because if not, you're out. But if you do, you're going to have a giant T-Hex that's going to take over the universe. This is also only for your first set of augments. If in your first set of augments, you get unstable Yordle delivery, stop everything, take it, you're going Yordles. Just do it. Decide what Yordle build you want to go. After you've started assembling all your Yordles, you probably can just dump everything until then. Uh, if you're getting lots of Gunners, then use Tristana. If you're getting Multicasters, use Teemo. If you're getting Slayers, use Kled. You're probably going to win. Finally, if you are not in Yumi's Zoom Zone, and in your first set of augments, you see Shirima's legacy. Go ahead and take it. We will get more into why not in Yumi Zoom Zone a little bit later. In general, with this build, your best strategy is to go with Strategist. Bring in Teemo for Multicaster Strategist. Then either J4 or Swain to finish that out. You'll need all seven Shirimans and then two Strategists. It's nearly a guaranteed top four if not a win, presuming you can get Azir and Nasus and get all of their required items. For part two, there are a whole bunch of portals that don't matter. Just very simply, if you see them, go to the video where I go through the builds that will get you hyper, as those builds pretty much still stand in this patch, especially after they B-patched it and re-nerfed Tarek and action so they return more to normal but here's the list of portals if you see them just go normal yordles portals petrocyte forest hearth home orns forge Noxkraya, jace's workshop university stillwater hold york's graveyard warlord palace shifting stands targon prime unstable risk lavender sea glask industries and ecliptic vaults you see any of those uh yeah just go as normal because they're going to provide very basic things that are not going to be changed by what build you go for. And some of those portals are really fun to play. Jace's Workshop, University, but I haven't seen them really impacting different builds in any different ways. So you can use the same builds in those that you can use in any of the others. What we want to focus on in part three are the portals that kind of scream out for specific builds. So let's get into that. So let's jump to some specific portals and how I tend to handle them. I think a lot of this is going to be intuitive as it follows a lot of the same basic rules of listening to the game. For portals like Scuttle Puddle or Thresh's Sanctum, where you end up getting extra items, components, things like that, I tend to like to go with builds where I can make great use of items such as in Demacia. As you saw in the video I posted last week, getting additional items during a Demacian build allowed me to change which champions were elites and who were getting the Radiant items thus making it easier to have a team with all champions getting all three item slots filled, which is going to make you pretty powerful. 
And that is not to say that other builds don't work in this. They absolutely do. It's just if I see the opportunity to go Demacia in those particular portals, I'll tend to push that direction. Now, let me just quickly go through one of my least favorite portals, and they changed this in ranked. I haven't seen it yet in the new patch in Hyper Roll, but since what they added to rank doesn't make sense in Hyper Roll, I assume the Hyper Roll version is just going to stay the same, and that is Yumi's Zoom Zone. I had mentioned earlier that if you get stuck in this portal and you happen to find Shirima's Legacy, do not take it. The reason is this one shortens the entire match to 20 seconds before overtime start. The Shirima's Legacy doesn't pop the talisman out until 8 seconds have passed, so you are not getting the full benefit of what it can do. Further, with Ascension, again, you're losing a big chunk of the time, so the one thing I would avoid in this is Shirima, and I would stay away from any other build that takes advantage of a longer playing time. The Deadeye Freljord build is probably one I would avoid in this case, because Freljord doesn't hit for several seconds, and then the Deadeyes are doing their additional attack every three seconds. You're gonna lose three of those attacks in this mode. If you get stuck in this, look for things that are going to do a lot of damage quickly. Challengers, Demacia, things like that, that you will be able to take down teams, hopefully before the overtime sets in. But let's move over to one that's a little more fun to play, Bandle Cafeteria. You might have seen what I did with the T-Hex in this particular build, where I just stuck as many spatulas next to it as possible to turn it into a beast that took up about 50% of the playing field. But Piltover aside, there's a strategy you can use to playing this board that can really maximize what you can get out of it, and it revolves around finding low-cost tanks that you can build around. So think about all those one and two cost tanks, Irelia, Orset, Maokai, Galio, Swain, any of them can work in this. When you're building them up, you just want to make sure to isolate them a little bit because you want to make sure that the health goes on to the champ that you want it to. Then it will allow you to build them up really strong. They will help take over and carry you into the top four. And remember, all spatula-based items count, so emblems, put them next to whoever you want to make huge. For House Light Shield, I found a couple of different builds that seemed to work really well. Sorcerer Strategist was a weird one that had some surprising results, because you could put the crown on Swain, and he would just stand in that front line for a long, long time. The other one was Shadow Isles getting the crown onto Callista because she tends to stay out of trouble. You could also go with Challenger and then put it on Kaisa as she will tend to be the last one standing. My only issue with that is that Kaisa is so strong when you get three really good items on her that you're probably better off going with other items and putting it on Callista. If you find yourself in the Dreaming Pool, this means that every stage you are going to get a champ that, I'm doing air quotes here, fits your team. That essentially means it's going to take one of your traits and give you a champ based on those traits. I would use this particular portal to go for traits that require high level champions that are not easy to come by. Shirima is an example of that. You're going to need Kasante in order to finish it off. This will pretty much guarantee that in stage eight, you're going to get Kasante because if you're running Shirima, it's going to pick that as the trait and give you a high level champ. Now that does not mean go blindly into Shirima. You're obviously going to want to pay attention to the augments, the items, etc. But for example, in this case, I'm running Sorcerer and it gives me the Ari as I get into 8. So I'm then able to take this up to the 8 Sorcerers. So when you get into this, start thinking about builds where you're likely going to need a 4 or 5 cost at the right time and the Dreaming Pool will supply it. 
Let's jump into an obvious one, the Placidium Library. This is going to give you a scroll that's going to allow you to make an emblem from one of the champions that you have on the board. Now again, don't ignore clues that the game is giving you for other builds, but when I do this, I start to think about the builds that need that one additional little boost. Void, Shadow Isle, the six Challenger, six Ionia builds where you can turn Set into a Challenger. Those type of builds become very easy with this particular augment. Again, take your clue from the game. In this particular match, it ended up giving me an additional Void Emblem, so I went, yeah, I'm definitely going to take it, because then I don't even have to wait to see if I get a Belveth in order to get it. Which just brings me to one other little thing on Void. Uh, because they've nerfed Baron so many times, you can now put Baron into the back line and he can potentially be more effective. It depends what you're facing and how strong they are at taking down your frontliners, but he will put in a ton of damage from the back line. So yeah, just a quick tip on Void with this. You can move Baron into the back line now, but Placidium Library is where you definitely want to try and go for 8 Void, again, if it's giving it to you. And excuse me while I put some footage in from a game that I didn't end up posting because I'd done the build so many times, but it was just such a fun ending for a game that I'm just going to throw that in here while I talk about two other portals that I don't have really good footage for. And this is before I get to my favorite portal, which uh, maybe you figured out because I haven't mentioned it yet, or maybe not. But the two portals I want to talk about are the Morris Omegnum and the Summit. The Summit gives you a bunch of lesser and greater champion duplicators, one at the start of each stage. Early stages lesser, later stages greater. It's good for trying reroll comps that you might not otherwise do, like Yordles. It's still really risky, but it's a good one also for a build like Challenger, where you are going to have to get a 4 cost up to 2 stars pretty quickly. In Morris Omega, you get two Tactician's Crowns. This gives you the ability to do boards like 6 Void, 6 Sorcerers, 3 Frail Yord, 4 Deadeye, 6 Invokers. Normally, I think of Hyper Roll in teams of 9, but this is different. Sorry, have to do it. These go to 11. So yeah, you can take your team to 11. And for this particular match, before we get to our final portal, they had been dancing all over thinking they had this one with a perfect spin to win setup. They did not expect a three-star Kaisa to come along and finish the match for them. Let's end this off with the one that is probably my favorite portal because it requires planning strategy and can allow you to do some pretty interesting things, and that's God Willow's Grove. It works. There's a little spot in the lower right hand corner where you can put a champ who is going to add to your overall board. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on one of the builds I'm about to mention this week, but it leaves you with some really interesting possibilities. It's very easy to get to six challengers, six Ionias. You just leave Samira in the grove and she will add to your sixth challenger. The one I'm going to do later this week involves Rogue, Shadow Isle, and Slayer, where you can put your additional Slayer in the Grove. You can also do Strategist Sharima, where you get to the full Strategist because you can allow your last Strategist to stay in the Grove. Finally, there's Freljord Deadeye Invoker, where you'll be able to get to 3 Freljord, 4 Deadeye, and 4 Invoker for pretty much maximum power. In this particular match, which is already uploaded under the title The Great Snipper, we used the Grove to add in Rogue and Slayer, which helped take our Gwen to the next level. Of course, having her at three stars wasn't bad either, but this was before the buffs, so she's even stronger now than she was then. Overall, use the portals as a guide point as much as you can where you see something obvious, but don't ignore signs from the game that are champs, items, augments that are pushing you in a direction. 
Hope you enjoyed this overview. And as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.